Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And what a journey this is. It is just so wonderful. We are going as Mardi Gras, Carnival, Fat Tuesday, and all of those wonderful things. And we're going to do it with my dear friend, Adela Chu. Now, Hi, Marcia. <laughs> And there she is. <laughs> That's Adela's music. It's an original piece, and I just wanted you to hear it. Yeah. And so, what to do? Um, Trove Tuesday. Fat Tuesday, <laughs> Carnival, and Mardi Gras. Adela is the absolute best person that I know to talk about all of those. Adela, she uh, created, uh, now tell me if I got it right, created Carnival in San Francisco. Is that That's correct? correct? That's correct, I did. 1979, <laughs> Presida wow. Park. Yes, that is such a great idea. And now we, we in Hawaii, we had Mardi Gras and Fat Tuesday, of course, because the uh, Portuguese uh, do the malasadas. Everybody does malasadas on Fat Tuesday. So tell us what is Shrove Tuesday or Fat Tuesday? Um, the Catholics call it Shrove Tuesday because that was from the French. And so now what what happens? What is that day? Okay, it's the day before Ash Wednesday and the right before the beginning of Lent. And you know, we all know that in when you have Lent, you have to forget the body. Uh, all the carnal things. So carnavale means to the leaving of the flesh. Yeah. So it's the day before you have to give everything up. And so you, the idea is you better party hardy because tomorrow, you know, you won't be able to. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the reason, that's the word, you know, fat Tuesday. So you, you get fat on Tuesday because you're going to get real thin through your lips. So it's it's something that has been adopted by the Catholic Church, and that's very much, in uh, has very much of a presence in all the Catholic countries in Latin America, and um, but in reality, it's something that began way before that. It's actually um, an old and pagan um, celebration. And during the time of Bacchus, when they were doing the grapes, you know, and they, they would yeah. get down and squash the grapes and stuff and everybody would get drunk. They would have these Bacchanals at the end of the time when they harvested the grapes. And, um, and Dios Mono, during the time of the Greeks, the ancient Greeks uh, was considered the God of mirth and that was carnival time too. So it goes way, way, way back. But what happened was as uh, we became Christianized, um, the Catholic Church kind of um, adapted it as one of its, its festivities because it had no choice because people were so into it that they wouldn't give it up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it became a Catholic, it became next to a catholic idea which which is the leaving of the flesh yeah fat yeah. tuesday so now we every every place that we know of calls it something different for instance everybody thinks of uh mardi gras mm -hmm. as new orleans mm -hmm. you know that's when you and and uh so what is it different in every, not every city, but 
most cities it's different. Well, Mardi Gras is the French word, Mardi. Mardi means Tuesday and Gras means fat. So it's the same as Fat Tuesday. It's just in French, yeah. And then the Bacchanal is something that in, in the Caribbean, they refer to it all the time as Bacchanal. And in reality, in Cuba, they actually do that right after the harvest. So they cut the sugar cane and then they celebrate. But there they do it for 12 days instead of four. <laughs> they just go off, you know, 12 days of partying and um, music and dancing and parades in the street. Well, yeah, after working so hard to harvest the sugar cane. And for anybody that's listening that's lived here long enough, you remember what harvesting the cane was like, with all the smoke and all of the, oh, it was a mess. But yeah, I can imagine. Now you're from Panama, so what's it yes. like in Panama? Well, it depends on where you were born in Panama because there are certain traditions that are the same and certain ones that are different. Like my, my I have a memory of there being Diablitos which are little devils, it means, um, diablitos means little devils. And these little devils would come out at carnival time and um, you would have to give them money or they would whip you. Oh, yes. <laughs> and they would actually come to your house and knock on the door. And um, there were two different kinds of devils. There were also the devils that were these uh, grown men and they were tall and they carried very very large drums that were called atabaques and um, they belonged to uh, a club uh, an African club um, and they they were part of and they they dressed in in skirts and the skirts had um, had mirrors on them so, uh, and these were the ones I was really afraid of because I was afraid if I did anything wrong that they would take me away. And, it, and they would play their music really loud at night. And so you could hear them coming down the street. So that is, that is one of the traditions of carnival is the Diablitos. And um, the ones, there are different colored Diablitos as well. There's, some of them are blue. They're all dressed, not dressed, but uh, they're painted, their skin's blue. Uh, those are more the little boys. Yeah. Where I live in Panama now, um, I don't live there all the time, but we have a house. It's a place called Los Santos and it's in the interior. And um, it's a, an amazing place because the carnivals they have there are famous. And um, they have a tradition of having two queens, one from Calle Arriba and one from Calle Abajo. And Calle Arriba is the queen from kind of the upper society. And Calle Abajo is more um, um, kind of uh, the kind of like every, every man's queen, um, you know, from, from the, pe the people's queen. Um, but every, every um, carnaval, they vote for a queen and they pick the prettiest girl and she becomes queen and uh, she has a float all to herself with her attendants. And then there's the murga, which is, uh, huge truck that can hold maybe 35 musicians. And it's like a solid wall of sound going down the street. It's all trumpets and trombones and saxophones and, and with a really hearty percussion section. And they just go around the park very slowly and behind the queen come, come her, um, you know, her followers and 
they're all singing a song that's been chosen to honor her. And, uh, and the one, the group that is the loudest is considered the one to, that wins. But it'll go around the park maybe three or four times. And this starts at about 11 o'clock at night. Um, and um, everybody's out there watching it. And it's really a, an amazing sight because the, the floats are, are very much larger than life. And then uh, once the first queen goes by, then she retires. And then the second group comes out and does the same thing. And then this will go on till like four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I remember about New Orleans. It just went on and on and on with the huge floats and the, what do they call the, the club? What What is it called in, uh, in French? I guess it is. It's like a parade? The parade, but there's a, each one, each float belongs to a group, a club, or... Yes, they have a certain name, and that's what's so interesting, because each group in each place has a different name for it. Like in Panama, we call it comparsas. Mm -hmm. Comparsas are the groups of people, and they have like a theme in common, and they have, they're dressed a certain way, uh, and you can identify them. Um, some of the places where you go, like uh, if you were in Brazil, for instance, it's a, an amazingly, uh, it's very, it's very refined what they do. Like, um, for instance, there might be a thousand people in one ala, and the ala is the name of, of the group of people. Um, There'll be several alas in one contingent. And um, let's say the idea is, uh, is, is spring. And there'll be the, the queen of spring. And then there will be different things. Like for instance, maybe people will be flowers. And maybe there will be uh, gardeners. And maybe there'll be, you know, uh, and, and always, the same colors and the same um, the same um, song, a song that unites them and musicians. And in Brazil, sometimes there'll be like a hundred drummers all doing the same rhythm together. And um, so it's like that. Well, now, um, let's tell, tell us about how you created Carnival in San Francisco. Well, I had been to Brazil and I had seen two carnivals while I was gone. So the first one was in uh, Bahia and it was a street carnival and it was wonderful and people we're all jumping behind something they call the trio electrico, which uh, was a group of guitar players on a, a on a kind of a truck, and everybody would was pulando, pulando, jumping behind them down the street, and uh, and it was very exciting, and it went on for four days, and um, when I first went to Brazil. I went because I was invited by one of my students and she said to me, carnival gonna be the end of this, this month. So you can come anytime because me, my friends, the sun, the sands and Yemanja, who's the goddess of the ocean are all here waiting for you. And she put at the bottom, Yes, came quickly, everybody waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so I couldn't resist the temptation. So I went to Brazil. And when I first got there, I arrived in Rio, but it was too chaotic. And, and I couldn't speak the language at the time. 
So I got on another plane and went to Bahia, which is more than the interior. And I spent my first carnival in Bahia. And um, I was fortunate enough to be in Brazil for the second carnival because, you know, the way that the date is not exactly the same, it has to do with the, the Catholic calendar, right? Right. So I was able right before I left Brazil to see the carnival in Rio. And that was a whole different thing. That doesn't happen in the streets. It happens in, a, in what's called the, the Samba, um, Samba Dome. And it's this huge kind of arena. And there were like so many amazing performers. And um, each one of those Escolas, they call them Escolas, had thousands of people in them. Mangueira and Mangueira for me was one of the um, biggest ones and their, their colors are very bright uh, green and this kind of a hot pink. And um, uh, Salgado, Salgado is blue and white. And then um, Beja Flor was used to be used to be a smaller group, but it, when I was there, it it won it won that year. So every group has a theme and represents the theme through writing a song, and then everybody has to sing the song if you're in it. You're dancing, but you're also singing the song. And there are unbelievable amounts of really good musicians. And then a lot of famous people will attach themselves, you know, on the floats and sing along. And um, it's, it's something that goes on and on and on day and night, literally. You, I mean, you buy a ticket and you can sit there and watch it day and night for four days. So that's the level, yeah, that's the level of intensity that we're talking about. Well, now, what I remember, um, all along the coast from New Orleans, across Louisiana and Mississippi, all along there, Mardi Gras was big, big, big parades and all of the bangles that they would throw out and the food, of course, was always food, lots and lots of food. And it was just absolutely, you know, for those of us that this that was new, it was wonderful. It, it was exciting to watch the people dance and sing and what have you. It was a crew. That's the word I was thinking of, crew. Yeah, crew. They say crew. Crew, yeah. And that was just fabulous to watch and feel like you were a part of something. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So now tell me about you in San Francisco. I uh, Say that again? San Francisco, when you in the carnival in San Francisco. Oh, yeah. So I came back to San Francisco and they didn't have a carnival. And I said, this is crazy. A city like this doesn't have a carnival. And I said to my students, well, we're going to have to ha have a carnival or I'm going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> I can't live in a, a place that doesn't have one. And so I ended up uh, because my students said, OK, well, we'll make a carnival. And they, we started immediately to put one together. And so this was in September. And uh, we started learning songs. And the way that I did my first carnival was I had a lot, a lot of students. And I put them into different comparsas. And I did different choreographies for each group. And each group was kind of at a different level devo developmentally. So my most advanced group, I call the Tribu dos Carajás. And they were amazing. Um, from the, They're like the Indians of the Amazon. They had these little uh, circles on their cheeks. 
and um, they had a, they were dressed in red and um, they had a dance that involved um, bows and arrows and stuff. And, um, and they went with the song, Martinho Davila's song of the Tribu dos Carajás, Amazon, Amazon Indians. And then I had a group called the Susubabai, that was the bird of the dawn. Uh, Susubabai is the first bird that you hear in the morning that wakes you up in the morning. And so you, you have to imagine what that bird looks like and make a costume for that bird and then uh, dance in it. And so we had um, su, 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 baba, eh. su, 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 baba, eh. Pajaro lindo de la madruga. Pajaro lindo de la madruga. We had that as our theme song. And then there was another group that was the, actually it wasn't the biggest group. The biggest group of all was just the Rainbow Comparsa that came out of all the people that all my friends that lived on 24th Avenue in San Francisco. They got dressed up with colors of the rainbow and participated. And then there was another group called the uh, Yemanja Comparsa because Yemanja is the goddess of the ocean. So people dressed up like different things that come out of the ocean, like squid or like um, dolphins or all kinds. And then of course, Yemanja is, she's a mermaid. So some people came as mermaids. Some people came as starfish. People came as all different kinds of beings that come out of the sea, but they had to dress in blue and silver and white. So I was joined by a group of people that were wonderful. They're musicians. Um, Marcus, Gar Marcus uh, Gordon was uh, um, an amazing musician who also happened to be uh, a Pai do Santo or, or um, he was within, within a religion, or, or an, a Yoruban religion. And he invited all the best drummers from the mission to participate. So Jose Flores came and he, his group was all dressed like dandies and they, um, they had a top hat and they had tails and they, instead of playing on drums, they played on um, frying pans. Oh. So they carried their fry, frying pans and played their music like this. And um, there was another group by uh, a girl who, um, who was, um, she, put together the money comparsa. And so they were all dressed in green and uh, with lots of uh, jingly, shiny coins and, and kind of like a, um, they're dancing kind of like a belly dancing. So this was the group of people that found their way to Presidio Park because I, wasn't sure if we were gonna get a permit from the city to be able to do this. And so I sent my friend, I sent my friend who had just gotten a permit. She had gotten a permit to, to return the sun, to bring back the sun. And it was just a whole bunch of people walking down the street. And so when the people saw her, her name, her name was Pam Miner and she wanted another permit, they just gave it to her. They didn't even stop to think that it was for a carnival. <laughs> so we were able to get the permit, and, but it was for Presida Park, uh, which is a little park in kind of um, in, the, in the mission. And mm -hmm. so we ended up doing three times around the park, we, we um, paraded around the park. And when we started off, we had about a thousand people watching us. And there was actually about 400 people that were actually in the parade. 
and about a thousand people watching. But by the end of the parade, I turned, I, I looked and there was nobody watching. And I was a little disappointed until I looked back and I realized that everybody had joined the parade. <laughs> so we ended the parade with 1,400 people. Well, now here you were in the parade um, and Mardi Gras here, which in Chinatown. And yeah. that was, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Not quite as grand as San Francisco or uh, any place else, but it was a lot of fun. You yeah. Know? You know what I also did? I also uh, did something called First Night. Yes. And First Night had parades every year for seven years. We did parades in, in the form of like a samba parade. Right. Yeah. And so we worked hard on that one for years. Yes. Yes. It was um, wonderful. It was. It was. Uh, we have a song, one of your songs. Hopefully, we can play it. Sing a song, let it be of peace. Let it echo over mountains, valleys, and streams. And that song will come back to me. Shaded in peaceful harmony. Peace is what I seek. Is what I see. If you sing a song, let it be of peace. Let it echo over mountains, valleys, and trees. That was a Martin Luther King parade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's that why I so have it. So much fun. <laughs> yes. It's, it was a lot of fun everybody in the world on your float singing so mm -hmm. that was so that was the song i wrote i know and For peace. Um, yes and, and i'm glad you said that because we have to i the uh before youtube gets hooed about using other people's music and so i'm glad you said it was yours yes <laughs> Yes, yes, it seems, now, what are you doing now, playing, where? Well, we saw you we're last not playing day. anywhere with COVID, but with COVID, um, yeah. our group is still together. And, um, our group is, the name of it is Espiritu Libre, and Espiritu Libre means free spirits. And um, we play um, a mix of Latin jazz and sambas and um, salsa. Oh, and um, um, we, were, we were playing before at a Mexican restaurant. Um, we're out of time. Right. They're telling me we're out of time. Okay. So we'll have to do this again. Yes. And thank you so much for spending this time with us. And oh, it was fun. We'll see you again. Uh, yes. Well.